Hello, welcome to episode 26 of Boxing with Ben. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to look at turning kicks. Um, so I've done another um, split video today where I've recorded two demonstrations earlier and I'm going to tag them on um, to the end of this video just to provide you with a demonstration of the techniques that I'm going to um, describe for you quickly. Um, just as a quick um, side point uh, at the start of this video, guys, always, always, always warm up before your workouts, um, says the hypocrite, because I um, slipped up on this score tonight. I was running around before the, uh, the workout this evening, before I did my uh, class with Combined Defensive Arts. I forgot to warm up my legs properly, and we were doing a savart lesson. Uh, which was really enjoyable but of course you spear the kicks so there was a lot of snapping motions and I snapped my knee um, out to the side for one of the kicks near the end of the class and pop <laughs> and it feels quite sore, tender and unpleasant now so note to self mainly but note to everybody else guys remember to warm up properly um, because you will of course cause yourself injury if your muscles and your um, tendons and joints aren't warmed up properly and you're using them with snap motions and, and jerk motions. That aside, turning kicks. So firstly, um, I was going to list some of the great practitioners of this technique, people who demonstrate it to great effect. You've got Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, you've got Jose Aldo, you've got uh, Yair Rodriguez, John Jones, um, Leo Timichita, um, Justin Gaethje, um, just trying to think off the top of my head. Sorry, I'm just rattling off people who've got a great turning kick here. And I got to the end of the line, and now I'm like, oh, I did have more people, but they're slipping my mind. Um, who else is a superb turning kicker? Oh, of course, Edson Barbosa. How could I possibly forget him in a, uh, a list of great turning kickers? I actually think Charles Oliveira has an underrated turning kick. I think he's got a really sharp rear leg turning kick to the body, which is actually one of the techniques that I demonstrate in my technique demonstration at the end. Um, so yeah, I've outlined some fighters there. The reason I outline the fighters is I'm just a dude who enjoys kickboxing and makes these videos for you. My technique isn't perfect um, where these guys are striking at an elite level. I watch them, I aspire to them, I admire their technique and that's where I aim to be at. Of course I'm going to fall short but at least if I'm half as good as they are then you know that's pretty decent. That's a, that's a good standard to hold myself to. So I name these people for you so that you can go back and watch their fights, watch their technique, watch how they deploy it at the highest level, um, so that you can draw from that what you will. You can practice techniques on the bag. Everybody goes about these things slightly differently, so you know you can find out something that works for you. But as I say, I name high-level practitioners as examples of exemplaries of the technique because I want you to watch them after you've tried you know the basics which are laid down by me, the kind of bread and butter stuff. Stuff, the mechanics so yeah I really really admire all of those athletes and their abilities with regards to that um, turning kick um, another legend that I forgot to mention is Anderson Silva wonderful turning kicks um, I would say the most devastating turning kick if I had to pick out one singular kick you know from one singular leg delivered to one singular part of the body if I had to isolate the most vicious turning kicks in the UFC are probably Justin Gaethje's rear leg turning um, kicks to the calf and to the thigh. Um, Habib Nurmagomedov, who is an incredibly conditioned, tough athlete, and of course was spurred on by the death of his father, which there's no more powerful, um, you know, motivation to win. Um, said that Gaethje's kicks were the hardest kicks he's ever felt in his life. Um, to the legs and a couple of times Khabib's legs buckled um, which is actually why I believe he shot for that takedown at the end because I think he was really really starting to feel Justin Gaethje's leg kicks um, and so he did what he does best which is utilise his Sambo wrestling make transitions and submit him um, and fundamentally like you know he has done every single opponent that they put in front of him just use that Russian Sambo and mauled him like a bear um, but as I say, the turning kick is a very useful technique for a multitude of reasons. Um, you know, it, it's a kick that can develop a lot of torque. Um, it can be thrown to the calf, the thigh, um, the abdomen, the rib cage. Um, it can be thrown to the head, the jaw, the neck. Um, 
you know, targeting that kind of region here, as I described before in my previous video, um, which Holly Holm knocked Ronda Rousey out with because it's an extremely important nerve cluster and a solid clubbing connection can completely shut down your central nervous system briefly um, and is useful for a very clean knockout. Um, now I look at two techniques with the turning kick. So in the first video, I show you the footwork for a turning kick and the hand placement. Um, I demonstrate very slow turning kicks, but you'll notice they're quite awkward and laboured, and that's simply because the turning kick works as a method that requires momentum. You know, the torque is developed through the technique, um, where when you break it down into, you know, turn the foot, lift up the leg, twist the leg horizontal, kick, it's laboured because that's not how you throw it in practice. You know, it'll be swivel the foot, lift kick. It's that fluid motion, you know. Um, and that's why it kind of appears laboured at first, and that's why I slowly speed it up and you know show it in different combinations just to show you that actually in practice, even though it's useful to learn the steps as a beginner because that gives you kind of a drill to learn, um, as you start to build it up, you kind of want to step away from that more traditional technique and just work up to a swivel kick um, that snaps and you know is less easy to catch or counter. So um, the other technique that I look at is um, faking a um, lead leg front kick to the midsection and then throwing a um, rear leg turning kick either to the midsection or the head. The reason you do this um, is the same reason that you'd incorporate fainting into you know, any um, combat sport discipline because you want to um, direct the opponent's attention, so in this case to the, the, um, the front of the body, so you either want to get them to drop their hands so that they're guarding the body um, so that you can throw that kick up to the head and that their guard obviously isn't in place to prevent any of the impact from that kick. Um, or you want to get them to focus on the front of the body so that when you um, spear that kick into the side of the body, again, the guard isn't there to, to block it or you know they can't kind of windscreen wiper, um, excuse that kind of crude comparison, but they can't kind of windscreen wiper parry the, uh, the kick off um, as fighters often do in the UFC. Um, I'm sure um, some of you out there will appreciate my analogy of, of parrying kicks. Um, so with the turning kick, the things that I really want to, to point out, so first I'll break down what I'm doing. So as I say, I either step off Baz Rotten style or I swivel my, my lead foot um, Muay Thai style. Um, I lift up my rear knee um, and as I'm turning my hips, I turn my leg horizontal and kick um, using the shovel of my foot into the bag. Now I've just described the fundamentals of the turning kick, but let me give you specific tips. I'll describe what I do in the video and then um, I'll move you onto the videos and you can watch those. So the first tip I can give you is if you want to develop more torque on the kick, which you'll notice me do at certain points, step off to your left and gouge the kick through the opponent. So when you connect with the kick, you're actually only halfway through the kick. You want to drive that through and you achieve that by, um, as I say, you know, you can do it uh, uh, Muay Thai style or you can do it Baz Rutten style. I prefer to do it Baz Rutten style and step off, but you step off to your left so you're off the opponent's centre line so that when you drive that rear leg turning kick through from the orthodox stance, um, when you connect you're only halfway through the kick um, and so you're kind of dragging and gouging that kick through the midsection of the opponent. It's delivered with a lot more torque if you do that. It's not always possible because you know your opponent's constantly moving and you're constantly moving and sometimes you will you know be on centre line when you deliver that um, rear leg turning kick to the calf, to the thigh, to the midsection, to the head, to the neck, wherever. Um, you're not always going to have the option to step off and throw that kick because um, your opponent might adjust as well um, as you're, you're delivering the kick. But as I say, if you want to develop extra torque, it's definitely worth um, you know stepping off to your left and, and dragging that kick through if you're fighting orthodox and throwing it with the rear leg of course that that footwork combination makes sense and i will demonstrate that a few times in the videos um the other thing as well is fainting um i faint both in terms of punches and kicks in the video and i also throw soft techniques um and my reason for doing this is that fainting is incredibly important not always throwing with full power is incredibly important for a multitude of reasons the first one of which is energy conservation you can't always throw every technique with full power because you'll gas out um the second thing is that it trains your opponent to think that um you know they've kind of 
got a false sense of security, I guess, that actually, you know, you're, you're maybe being tappy or, you know, you've got uh, pillow hands and feet and, you know, you're not really throwing with much power so that when you do see an opening, you can throw that technique with, with spite and malice and you've still got the energy in you to do so um, when you see that opening and, and that can obviously be a real surprise, a real shock to the system and have quite a, a pronounced effect as a result. The other thing with fainting as well is it trains your opponent into a guard. So, you know, if you faint, for example, um, a jab to the head, um, the opponent might guard the head. Um, if you are successful in the faint, you know, if the telegraph is received as a genuine shot, and then you can redirect and drive that shot into the body. So I do a, a manner of faints. Um, my favourite one in the video, just because it's a faint, and then it leads into the turning kick. So I use this one quite often because... Um, you know, it demonstrates the technique alongside being a feint, is a, a feint of the um, uh, lead leg front kick into a um, rear leg turning kick, either to the midsection or the head. So as I say, you know, it trains the opponent to um, block down the centre line to the body, and then you bring that turning kick in either to the, the abdomen or the head. Um, but other feints I use, I feint a jab into a hook, um, I throw some tappy um, side kicks just to sort of, you know, misdirect attention and, and sort of break things up in terms of, you know, how much power I'm throwing with and, you know, just to, again, just to get your opponent thinking, just to increase the mental gymnastics because a fight is as much in the mind as it is in the body. Um, and, you know, sometimes say I'll throw out a right hand, but it'll only reach half extension. And again, it's just to tempt that guard, to start training the guard, um, to train their reactions and, and also to test them, to see how reactive they are, what they react to. Um, so, you know, there are techniques in there that are tappy. There's some fainting and, and that's intentional. That's just, you know, kind of showing the full range of assets that you need to bring to a, um, a fight and um equally to a bag session you know it's it's useful to incorporate these because then if you train yourself on the bag to do it you're more likely to do it in practice when adrenaline kicks in and muscle memory is your 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 you know sword shield anvil and armor um so yeah so you got the two videos um as i say i've described it already but i break down the turn and kick in the first one and then throw it a couple of times properly on the bag and then mix it in with that feint which I described and then in the second video it's just a bit of bag work some light tappy stuff, some heavy stuff but utilising punches and kicks mixing in that turning kick which as I say is the focus of these videos um, or this video, not these videos I haven't made a series yet on the turning kick um, but for now it is this video um, but as I say, you know, the turning kick is a great technique very versatile, very powerful, very useful, um, and if thrown with correct technique and footwork can develop a lot of torque. Um, Joe Rogan is a big fan of the turning kick. Um, I saw him in a pair of jeans throwing um, turning kicks to a uh, PSI sensor, and that was ridiculous. Like, I tell you what, like the guy has extraordinary kicks. Um, you know, both in terms of power and technique, he just develops so much torque on those kicks. So he's another one to watch for turning kicks. When I mentioned people to watch earlier, he's definitely another one I would recommend for, for good technique. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on turning kicks. Um, I'll let you watch the uh, demonstrations now. But in the meanwhile, guys, take care and keep boxing. And good luck with your uh, bag work and practice. All right, then.